Question number five, Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health. Does he stand by all his statements on after-hours medical treatment? The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Health, yes, he does stand by his many statements on after-hours medical treatment, including his concern about the costs of some after-hours services, despite the fact that the Government has put an extra $144 million into primary care over four years. Uh, there has always been a wide variation in after-hours fee charges. For example, the Ministry of Health reported several years ago that many adults around the country were paying over $86 for after-hours visits, and indeed there were instances of some people in the Queenstown area paying up to $200. Grant Robertson. Does he still stand by his statement that, quote, in Auckland within the next six months we will have a network of 10 after-hours clinics providing low-cost access to health services made in February? The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, work is underway to develop those clinics. Uh, it's proving to be a complicated task because it's a very involved task, but I, can, but I can assure the member it will be in place later this year. Grant Robertson. Thank you, question. Will the 10 clinics be operating from 1 July 2011? The Honourable Peter Mr. Dunn. Mr Speaker, I can't give the member an absolutely precise operating date, but it will occur this year. Grant Robertson. Question, Mr Speaker. What guarantee can he give uh, Aucklanders that there will be more affordable and accessible after-hours care when the Waitamata DHB have expressed concern that, quote, total funding available will not cover a comprehensive range of services? The Honourable Peter Mr Dunn. Speaker, I think there are three things I could say in response to that. Firstly, $144 million uh, more in primary care, $14 million of which will be going to after-hours care, after care over the next four years. Secondly, the 10 clinics that the members referred to in his question, which will be in place later this year. And thirdly, the report from the uh, Auditor-General's investigation, which noted that all contractual responsibilities by DHBs were being met in this area. Grant Robertson. Good question. Have any contracts been signed for after-hours permits in Auckland from 1 July this year? The Honourable Peter Mr Dunn. Speaker, I answered earlier to the member that work on the development of these clinics is proceeding. The, the timetable has, will, has shifted a little bit, but they will still be operational this year. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Um, Mr Speaker, I've taken your advice about uh, asking extremely direct questions, and, and that was one. It was very simple. Have any contracts been signed for services from 1 July this year? And the Minister didn't I understand. think that was a very, a very straight question. The Minister may not have the information, but I would invite him to answer it. it well, was a very uh, Mr, Mr Speaker, I think question. it was obvious from my earlier answers when I said that the facilities... Perhaps the member would let me answer the question. Order. Order the minute. Order. The Minister is trying to assist the House. What I said in response to earlier questions was that the clinics would be operational later this year. By definition, that means it will not be the 1st of July. Question of supplementary grant point, of order, no, point, point of order, Grant Robertson. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek leave of the House to table the minutes of the Waitamata DHB Community and Public Health Advisory Committee meeting on the 9th of March this year where they expressed their concern that the total funding available will not cover a comprehensive range of services. Leave us sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Uh, question number six, Aaron Gilmore. 